What's up, Fight Fans? This is Kurt DeVille with Counter Punch Boxing News, and I have some new news concerning Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev. They have set a deadline for negotiations over a world heavyweight title fight. The IBF has confirmed. Um, <clears throat> Britain's unified world champion has been awaiting confirmation of his next fight after being ordered to make world title defenses against Pulev and Usyk, his IBF and WBO mandatory challengers. Of course, we know that, but appears Pulev to be the next in line for Joshua as the IBF has revealed that both fighters requested more time to agree a deal, okay? Um, a spokesperson from IBF told Sky Sports, I have just been told that Pulev and Joshua Camps have asked until January 31st to negotiate. And these are the two um, situations that they're dealt with. Eddie Hearn put his two cents in. He had this to say. Conversations are ongoing with all parties to plan what's next and it will rely or it will really come to a head over the next few weeks. We are still awaiting clarification from the governing bodies to confirm who is chronologically next, but right now everything is in play. In terms of Usyk versus Chisora, that is still a potential outcome, but March 7th, 7th is unlikely. Instead, we have March 28th on hold at the O2 Arena, okay? Pulev has only been beaten, of course, by Vladimir Klitschko, and was due to jo and was ch going to challenge Joshua in late 2017, but ruled out due to an injury, and he fought um, Takam instead. And I remember that fight well. Um, now, basically, what this means, they're still trying to hold on to both belts. I see what's happening. Hearn's trying to negotiate with both sanctioning bodies between the IBF and the WBO, and he's trying to juggle, like, okay, who's first and who's next? And I think that's a smart deal if he has that option. But if he does not have that option, if it's, hey, if it's IBF or the WBO, if it's one of those two, It has to be what it has to be. He has to drop one. He hasn't dropped any. He's still unified on all three belts. But if there's no way to, to keep all belts because both belts and both sanctioning bodies are asking for that fight at the same time, knowing they're owned by the same person, which is retarded, you have to let it be. And IBF is more strict. I think they are more thorough with uh, stripping people. Okay, so, and it just makes more sense with Pulev. But it's tricky with Pulev because Pulev being a Bob Arum top rank fighter, mandatories are very tricky. And for people that don't know how mandatories work, they work like this. A mandatory challenger does not have to give you a rematch. A mandatory challenger can, um, they can vow for a purse bid. They can ask, they can demand for one. If, if they don't settle with a certain amount of money, okay, which Bob Arum, I think with Pulev, I think that's what they're going to do. I think they're going to ask for too much money and then it's going to go to a purse bid by default after March 31st because they have up until that time. And I think it's in the best interest of Bob Arum to do that. For his fighter, I think he will, unless Eddie Hearn says, hey, okay, let me give you 20% and hope they go for the bite. But you know Bob Arum being a lawyer and a promoter how he is, he's just going to do the numbers. And he's going to say, no, 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 we want at least 25%. Eddie, you don't know shit about boxing. Yet. We want 25. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... It's going to go to a purse bid, and then at that point, they don't have to negotiate a rematch clause. So if Pulev goes in there and pulls an Andy Ruiz, right, we will have a new unified challenger, and that will be a totally different story. And wow, imagine that. Imagine for a second Pulev beating Joshua, getting the three belts, being a top-ranked fighter. Tyson Fury does do what he's supposed to did 
uh, or do what he did with Deontay Wilder only better wins the WBC and are both and all the all the heavyweight champions are at top rank. It's a possibility. It's a very it's a it's it's possible, people. This is boxing. In fact, this is heavyweight boxing. So one punch can change it all. But back to reality. <laughs> um, that's what we're looking at. Pulev versus Joshua. Um, Eddie's trying to work both sides. I think he's just honestly, he's stressing himself out. You know, let the WBO go. Because the WBO is not going anywhere. It's still in his stable, and he has to understand that, like, those guys can fight for it. Anthony Joshua, we can tell by now the man made $85 million as a challenger. That's not going to stop his marketability. He's, he hasn't lost any, any of his endorsements, so the belts don't mean much. After, after Anthony Joshua already said, well, if I lose, it, I just lose. But I understand that he doesn't want to just give them up. But, hey, he's not giving them up. He's putting them on ice. Right. He's giving it to Usyk and Usyk starts the beginning of his journey in the heavyweight division by being a belt holder. That's if he can be either Chisora or Parker. OK, so it looks good all the way around for Eddie Hearn. Now, as far as Joshua, just want to hold on to those belts. Those belts are like, look, is those belts are like being holding on to the presidency. You know, um, they're stressful. They're a responsibility. They require a lot of people's attention and responses, and demands, you know, so it probably would be better if he did go for the WBO, but due to the mandatories, they're both mandatories, okay, but if I'm Pulev, and I know I'm what, 37, 38, hell, I'm gonna go for the purse bid, give me 25% so I can get paid, if I'm gonna get knocked out and beat up, I'm gonna get paid, 25% looks very nice, especially coming off of what's 25% of what? 30 million? <laughs> you know what I mean? Because we don't know how much this fight will, will be or whatnot on top of other precedes and um, splits and things of that, you know, live gate and all that good stuff. So, you know, so if I'm Pulev, if I'm Bob Arum, I would be doing exactly that. Um, the fight itself looks good. These guys, I guess. Um, Pulev can make uh, a good account of himself, but this is what we have, you know, and the IBF, at least they are cooperative because a lot of times they're not, they give you a certain time. And if you don't abide by that, they strip you. So at least they're like, okay, we'll give you to the 31st, you know, and maybe that's coming from un them understanding that he's also the WBO and the WBA world champion. So maybe they are, you know, being lenient in that way because of that fact. But we'll never know. Anyway, you guys tell me what you think about the IBF and the extended deadline for negotiating a potential fight between Anthony Joshua and Kubrat Pulev or Anthony Joshua and Alexander Usyk. Of course, please subscribe. And you guys have been Counterpunch. Peace.